the world look like if it had a hundred people? So it basically looks at uh, a proportion of um, variables and factors and look and sees out of a hundred people how many people would have access to certain things, how many people would speak a certain language, etc. So I'm going to show a few of those facts with you and talk you through how they relate to some of the topics we learn at GCSE and A level. The first fact is pretty uh, basic uh, maths and uh, biology. Fifty. 50 people uh, were born female, 50 people were born male. It's kind of 50-50 chance you get a Y or X chromosome from your father when you get conceived. So that's not a much of a surprise. Um, 25 of these uh, 100 people would be uh, children under the age of 18. 75, obviously, would be adults over the age of 18, of which 9 would be over the age of 65. Okay, so that gives you a bit of an idea of how the world's divided. We've basically got a few old people less young people than we used to, and quite a lot of people uh, in uh, working age, which is great, but obviously these people will age, and if they're not replaced, it might lead to a bit of a demographic issue, whereby we don't have enough people paying taxes to pay all the pensions later on down the line, especially in some countries like China, where they've had the one-child policy, which has really skewed the population pyramid you probably all remember doing in geography. Um, the fact here that baffles a lot of people, if there was 100 people on planet Earth, 60 would live in Asia, 16 would live in Africa, 10 would live in Europe, 9 would live in Latin America, and 5 would live in North America. Um, so when reading the news, um, China's been in the news a lot recently. A lot of people, uh, especially when you hear uh, the, the, the presidential elections in the US or you hear uh, certain politicians, they discuss about how China is gaining more and more power. Um, they're wanting to take over the world. They're wanting to replace the US as the, as the hegemonic power uh, in geopolitics. And they wanted to become a superpower. On that, for year 13s, I recommend you watch The Rise of China on BBC iPlayer. It's a really good uh, documentary about uh, superpowers, which is a topic you're going to be studying this year. Um, but when you look at this stat, it's not surprising. 60 people would be living in Asia. So it's not, it, we shouldn't be shocked as uh, people living in Europe that there's only 15 people out of these 100 that live in Europe or North America. So why would they have a, more of a say than the 60 who live in Asia and the 16 that live in Africa? Okay. There's more people living in Africa than the whole of Europe and uh, the North America put together. And that's only set to rise. So it just makes you think about how um, fair, how much of a say we have is, I'd say, probably disproportionate compared to the number of people who actually live in our part of the world. Um, 31, peop uh, 31 people would be Christian, 24, 23 sorry, would be Muslim, 16 wouldn't have a religion, 15 would be Hindu, 7 would be Buddhist, and 8 would be other. So that would be Judaism, Rastafarianism, etc. It uh, just gives you a bit of a breakdown of the main religions. Um, 12 would be speaking Chinese, 6, so half that, would be speaking Spanish, 5 would be speaking English, 4 Hindi, 3 Arabic, 3 Bengali, 3 Portuguese, Two, Rush, two would be speaking Russian, two would be speaking Japanese, and 60 others would be speaking a myriad of other languages, like me, French, for instance. Um, again, tw 12 people would be speaking Chinese, okay? So it just shows you how big China actually is. So it shouldn't come as much of a surprise to most geographers um, that China is getting more and more of a say, wanting to get more and more of a say on the international stage. Uh, 24 people would live in a city. 46 would live in a, a countryside. In 2007, for the first time in human history, more people started to live, start, were living in cities than in the countryside. Um, that has an impact on the access to services, people's quality of life, etc. For good or for worse, depends on where you live in a city, but it's a really interesting concept of urbanisation and development you can tie into this. Seven people would have a college or university degree. 40 people would have access to the internet. That means 60 people don't, so the majority of people don't. So think about how your life could be, how different it would be if you didn't have access to the internet. Um, 78 people would have a shelter from rain and wind, as a, a.k.a. a house. Um, not in the same type of house, but they have to have somewhere to stay safe. 22 would not. So for a geography point of view, uh, think about the vulnerability of these 22 people. How vulnerable are they going to be to um, a tropical storm, to a flood, to an earthquake, to just the wind and or just everyday weather conditions outside, okay? One person would be dying of starvation, 11 would be undernourished, and baffling in it for me, I find, is 22 would be obese or overweight. And that contrasts to how 
resources can be spread in uh, unevenly between those who don't have access to a decent amount of food and people who have so much access they don't know they just they can buy so much um 91 people would have access to safe drinking water which is a really nice high result but it does mean nine would have no access so they'd suffer from um cholera they'd suffer from um diseases which was waterborne diseases uh, I know in Yemen for example where there's a civil war at the minute uh, that has a massive impact on um, the people there and again that prevents uh, civilizations and, and, and uh, groups from developing 82% would have access to electricity 18 would not um, that again impacts I've got literally got a computer screen behind the phone I've got my phone I've got I've got Alexa machines, I've got my light up here, I've got, we've got so many things which are connected to the, to the electricity. If you don't have that, it makes a massive difference on how quickly you, you, you as a family can develop and your country can. 68 would have access to a toilet, uh, 18 would have access to basic infrastructure and 14 would have no, no toilet whatsoever. And for me, the one which really makes me think about development and why there's so much inequality in the facts I've just given you is that one person would control 50% of all the mon money on, on earth and the 99 others would share the rest. And then of these 99 others, 11 would earn less than $1.9 per day. And so when you think of how unequal the world is, it doesn't come as a surprise when you see that one person controls 50% of all the uh, money in that in that world. Um, and it leads to questions of uh, aid, it leads to questions of what could we do to make sure people are able to be given a fair chance. In the UN um, Human Rights Act, every human needs to be given the same rights. Well, it doesn't strike me that they, that they are if one person has 50% of all the money on earth and therefore has his own yacht. His, I say his because most of the billionaires are men, unfortunately. Um, Whilst there's some people who can't even, when we've got one person controlling 50% of all the cash and you've got what, one person dying from starvation, 11 who are undernourished. That's just, drives me insane. Um, but it just makes you think about what could we do to make sure we can shrink that development gap and ensure that everyone has the right to access the exact same opportunities. Something for you to think about and something which I know in year nine we have a look at when you look at a development.